This church needs many spiritual fathers and mothers who don't go around giving advice. I'm always scared of people who are eager to give advice. I met especially some older sisters like that, always ready to pounce on young people like a lion to give advice. And if you really look into the heart of those young sisters, they feel like running away. <gasps> the sister's coming, I better run. She's coming to give me some advice. Don't be like that. Be one who encourages, not just going around telling people what to do, what to do. There are some people who have such a lust to give advice to others. They think they are godly. No, they are ungodly. I'll tell you the type of person you must be if you listen to me. People must be so eager to get advice from you that they long to come and talk to you and say, tell me, I want to hear something from you. That's the type of sister and brother you should be. Not one who's got a lust to tell people what to do, whom to marry and what you should have this way, that way, the other things. Be very careful in these areas, dear brothers and sisters. Be a father. Be a father and a mother spiritually. We need many people like that. And we've got to grow up to that. There's one more passage of scripture which I want to share with very briefly before we close. And that is in relation to maturity. And that's in the book of Titus. Letter to Titus. Paul writes to Titus. He talks about how various types of people should behave. Titus in chapter 2. Verse 2. He speaks about older men, older women, young men, young women, young men. All of us fall into one of these categories. Are you an older man? You must be serious and dignified. You must not be that playing the fool type. Sensible, mature, sound in faith. If you're an older person and you're not solidly established in the faith and you've been here even 10 years, I want to suggest something to you. When you go home, fall on your face before God in your bed and hang your head in shame there. Lord, I'm thoroughly ashamed of myself that I've been 10 years in CFC and I don't have wisdom to share with others. I want to change. I don't know how many of you will take me seriously. You should be sound in your faith, in love, if you're the type of person who can get out of love just because somebody stops loving you, you don't deserve to be. I mean, you don't deserve to say you've been in CFC 10 years. Older men, be sound in love. Nobody can shake you. Sound in faith and in perseverance. Then older women. Older women must be reverent in their behavior. I mean, you don't expect older women to be jumpy like little girls. They must be serious in their conduct and uh, not malicious gossips. Why doesn't it say about men they should not be malicious gossips? Are men allowed to be? No. See, men and women have different temptations. Men have great temptation to sexual lust. Jesus never spoke about women lusting because it's only a perverted woman who will have sexual lust. Man, man, there may be sexual desire, but sexual lust is a different thing. Men have it and that's why it speaks about men. When it comes to women, it's not sexual lust. It says malicious gossips. Take that seriously. Your weakness is not sexual lust. Your weakness is about opening your mouth and blabbering all types of information that you got from different people and rejoicing in hearing that and passing it on. And some, especially malicious, where you like to say not something good, but something bad about other people. That is your prime temptation, just like, Lusting with the eyes is the prime temptation for men. Please remember this. That's why it says women should not be malicious gossips. And not enslaved to much wine. I don't think we have a problem there. We can go and move on from there. <laughs> Teaching what is good. Imagine being a sister, a godly sister, who instead of being a malicious gossip, teaches what is good to the younger ones, teach the younger ones how to love their husbands. Isn't it a wonderful thing, you older sisters, if you can teach younger women how to love their husbands, how to love their children, how to bring them up with love? 
Don't teach theology and all that. Forget all that. Leave that to the men. How to be sensible. Teach younger women how to be sensible. How to be pure. How to be a worker at home. How to be kind. You see, this is a great need among our younger sisters, I tell you. A lot of our younger sisters know how to operate the laptop and sing in the choir. But they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to mend their clothes. They don't know how to wash their clothes. They don't know how to keep their uh, house tidy. But laptops, sing in the choir. Wow. That's not what it says here. It says young women must learn how to be a worker at home. And if, you're not, if you haven't learned to be a worker at home, you're not fit to get married. Forget about marriage. Go and join a convent or something. No, you're not going to operate laptops when you get married, I'll tell you that. And sing in the choir there. You'll have to look after children. And if you've seen babies, they mess up quite a bit. And so there are a lot of things young women have to learn. And that's what the Bible says. Paul is telling Titus, teach young women to be workers at home. I want to ask you young sisters, have you been a worker at home? Have you helped your mother cooking food or washing clothes or cleaning up the house or helping your younger siblings or any such thing? Or you just been a lazy person operating laptops and singing in the choir? Think about it. Don't think you're spiritual. However well you can operate a laptop or sing in the choir. You're not spiritual. And that's what the older women should be teaching the younger women. That's what it says here. Otherwise, what does it say? The word of God will be blasphemed and dishonored, verse 5. Imagine that the word of God is dishonored because young women are not workers at home. Or they are not subject to their husbands, the ones who are married. In the same way, urge the young women to be sen young men to be sensible. There's some good instructions there for people of all ages. The Bible is very practical. And it's very, very important that in CFC, our young people grow up to be practical Christians, helping one another, caring for one another, and their knowledge of Scripture and their knowledge of God leads them to this type of good works that will bless others. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I hope you realize, my dear brothers and sisters, as we pray that Whatever you have heard, don't take it as a word of rebuke, no. Take it as a word of instruction. That's the only way I meant it. I don't know most of you. I mean, I'm away from here so long that more than half of you, I don't even know your names. And I know nothing about your personal life. So this cannot be personal because I don't even know, know you. So it's not rebuke, it's instruction. Instruction that will really make you a godly older person and a godly younger person whose life can really accomplish something before you leave this earth. That is my burden. That's why I encourage you to study the scriptures. Start a disciplined life today. Discipline in studying the scriptures. You young girls are disciplined in learning work at home, etc. So that you'll grow up to be a godly, balanced young person. Yeah, Heavenly Father, we really want all of us to grow to maturity. We want the young people here to grow to maturity, strong, to be practical Christians, not just with a lot of head knowledge and be able to sing a lot of songs. But Lord, lead us and guide us, we pray. We pray that we shall raise a generation of practical Christians in this church. Help us, we pray, that we'll do that in the days to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.